Hey guys, um, so today I'm going to be brushing a mold. Um, this mold is from Danner Builds. Philip Danner, his shop is called Danner Builds. These molds are incredible. This is a seahorse um, that actually a friend of mine, Susie, did with a new mica set that I have coming out. It's a chameleon set called Under the Sea. I haven't released it yet, but she was playing around with them for me. She's going to be my artist for my set. I've been choosing artists to, you know, showcase the sets for me. Um, this is a shark, a great white shark. If you guys know me, I'm obsessed with sharks. So, um, I just did a little bit of UFO, which is, it's a color shift. It'll be like chrome, kind of metal, like a UFO. <laughs> and I put a little black in the tips, um, actually into the stars I used. And I used a little ray gun. This goes red and then a little bit of red chrome pigment around the mouth to get some blood and then I'm gonna pour some great white shark into this when I mix up the resin for the seahorse a little hair on there okay so chrome pigments I'm gonna be using pink green rose and 14 karat and then I'm gonna fill in my seahorse with yellow or orange. This is clownfish. And I have it. each color that you order comes with one of these little brushes so that you can brush molds. So I'm gonna start on my seahorse and I'm going to use pink and rose. I'm gonna alternate colors down the middle. And I might fast forward a little bit through when I get going because it really takes forever. Um, this is something, so this is the pink color. This is great, like, for relieving stress. You just really sit there and relax and just brush on. Take your time. You don't have to finish it all in one day. Um, and then I'm going to use the rose. And it's really, like, limited to your imagination. The color combination that you can use. The things that you can do with this. And I don't, the one brush really lasts forever. I do send a brush with every color, but it, it lasts. You can use it. It's not giving me any kind of, you know, it's not mixing the colors together. I'm using one brush for the same color is what I'm trying to say. And this little gram should last you forever. I want to put these chrome pigments on everything. I'm obsessed with them. Um, there's 10 colors. If you get a little bit on your, too much on your brush, I, <laughs> I'm not even in the camera. If you, you can kind of hit the next one to dust it off a little bit that you were supposed to go to. So there's 10 colors. There's 14 karat gold. There's regular gold. There's pink. There's silver. Green. Purple. Light purple. Copper. Rose. And there's blue. Blue's really pretty. And you can pour a dark color behind them. You can pour a light color behind them. They're truly just stunning. So I'm literally just going to continue right down the middle all the way around.
Okay, so I got my middle part done and now I'm trying to decide like if I want to use gold or silver. I was going to use gold, but now that I'm seeing this like pretty pastel pink color, I feel like silver, ah, they both look good with it. I don't know. I'm going to use an orange or yellow background. I feel like silver is going to com complement the pinks better. So I'm gonna go with silver. Or I'm gonna be here all day deciding. Okay, and I'm gonna use green for his little eye. Let's see if you can see that. Boom, boom, right in his eye and right on his nostril there. And then I'm gonna get my silver And I'm going to do his little wispy hair things. It has been raining non-stop here. We have like a disturbance in the gulf. It's not even coming towards us, but it's pushing off all the weather into us. And my poor animals are super um, restless. I'm gonna separate the tail here with the silver from the little fin. And then I'm gonna get some red, um, chrome red. This red I'm testing, it's not out yet. I haven't dropped it, I wanted to test it first. It's friggin' amazing. The red and the green are more expensive than the other pigments. Um, the red is super expensive, but it's like fire. Red is my favorite color. I, I'm sure I've said this a hundred times in other videos. It's like my life color, my car, my purse. But for art, I love purple. I like the red for the art too, but purple is my art color. All right, so I'm gonna do his little tendrils that go out this way in red. I hope this color combo um, comes out good. I was trying to get inspiration and I was googling um, seahorses and I saw one that was actually I think drawn and it was really cool. It was like these colors pink and orange. So we shall see. I think any color you make it, it, it would be super pretty. This mold's awesome. So anything that you don't color will be, you know, if I pour orange in here, anything that you don't color will be that color, will be that orange color or whatever color you pour into your mold, if that makes sense. You'll see. Wow. Oops. I almost tipped that whole red over. I'd usually take my time more and just 
like I said, relax and do this, but I'm trying to go a little faster for you guys. I have a hair on there and I rinse this out and there's some water in there. A little bit of water, probably not good. I just blew my mold out a little bit. There we go. And these, when you get to the end, are super tiny, so you don't need much. Just like a little dab. I kind of like dab it and then follow the line out. So I was trying to get on a schedule and making videos and then life is kind of like happening. I'm busy with the micas and finally after two years after the hurricane, we're getting the ceiling finished in our living room and I have new puppies and crazy stuff is going on in the world and I'm truly like lacking motivation to mix up resin. So anyways, I'm definitely happy to be doing another tutorial. All right, so I want most of the fin to be the orange color that I'm putting in. And I might just trace the bottom here with some rows. in the top with a little bit of pink. Ah! Okay, guys, so this is gonna be another one of my great teaching moments. I literally like dumped the whole container, not the whole thing, but a lot onto my seahorse. I don't know what's going on. Like the last YouTube tutorial I tried to make, I totally messed it up. I'm like off my game, but I'm gonna show you how to fix this. So I'm just gonna get a Q-tip. First, I, I tipped it over. I didn't show you that part because I kind of like freaked out. <sighs> Blow it off. And I'm just taking a little Q-tip and it has some, you could use acetone or alcohol. Hopefully and just I'm scooping that color off. I'm gonna fix this. Where I didn't want it to be. See that the Q-tip literally like picks it up. So we are good. This stuff happens, it happens to the best of us. I wish it didn't happen in the middle of my tutorial or my filming, but it did. But see, I'm literally just scraping it right off or picking it up. Like it never happened. I grabbed acetone because it was right next to me 
but I don't know if acetone is really good for molds. So if I was you, I would use alcohol. And then I can just come back. Hold on, I see a little spot right there. Okay. Wowzers. Now I'm just gonna come back and fix my silver. <sighs> and I had a little pink here that I erased. It is kind of like an eraser. Alrighty, and I'm gonna fix my silver by just dusting a little bit more on. You're only really going to see the other side when you flip it over you're gonna see the other side. And the top of it's not gonna matter so much. So if there's a little bit of pink on top of my silver, you're not really gonna see it because the silver's already laid down, if, that's, if that makes sense to you. All right, and now for his belly, I'm gonna clean this up a tiny bit more right on this blue part because that is going to pick up on the orange. Here, so you can see better. I'm just cleaning up. Isn't that cool how it just picks it right up, though? So I saved a disaster. You see that? I also wanted to say, um, if you guys are brushing micas in and you have like asthma or allergies, you probably should have your respirator on. I don't because I have to talk to you. Um, but those little mica flakes do, you know, like fly up in the air, so. Even like a little, everybody's got masks probably laying around these days. Okay. I forgot that I saved the tail, the little edge of the tail. Because I wanted to do that a different color. Okay, that's good enough. So I want to do his underbelly. Some of the spots I want to do green to bring out his eyes. I think that might look neat. So just in these little strips here. And I need to go back and touch up those little parts where the um, chrome spilled because I see a little pieces missing. That's so funny. That was like a totally oh crap moment. Let me play it in slow motion. But that's part of resin and part of like making mistakes and trying to fix them. There's this little edge here. I'm just going to do it in that green. Okay. 
So now the only thing I have left, I think that's it. I just have to fix, I think I'm going to leave his hair orange because it's going to go down into, that's all going to be orange, orange. The belly's going to be orange. Let me just touch up the pink here. You don't even really have to put much on your brush. <sighs> Just move it around. There's so much on there. This stuff spreads for days. Okay. Now I'm going to mix two ounces of resin. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to keep adding. There's these little... Do I want that to be orange or silver? I think that's enough silver. Okay, so I'm going to mix two ounces. Of okay, so I'm going to mix two ounces of resin and... I'm going to use orange for the backdrop. I'm going to actually mix more ounces, more than two, because I want to do my shark too. And I'm going to use great white shark in the back of this. So I'm thinking like an ounce for this and two for that. So maybe like three. So I'll just do four. Like I always end up doing so that I can make some magnets. Let me show you the red on this magnet I made. It is so gorgeous. I love flowers too. But isn't that pretty? To so put in people's orders. It's so cool. Okay guys, I'm going to go make some resin and I'll be back. Okay guys, so I cleaned up my area. I mixed um I mixed 4 ounces of resin. I separated it. Now I'm going to put some of this orange mica in. This is clownfish. You want to make sure that you mix your micas good. Scrape the sides. Sometimes it's even better to put the powder in before you put the resin. Um, if you don't mix it well, there will be little clumps. It'll show up in your artwork. So everybody asks, how do you get um, the resin into the tiny little spots? And I'm going to show you. I kind of drip from the middle. And then when my drip starts getting very thin, then I run it into my little spots. Like so. It's kind of like having a lot of patience. Hopefully you can see that. But you put a good amount on your brush, on your popsicle stick let it drip and then when the drip starts thinning out I follow it into the little crevices the last time I did one of these I um I overflowed it and it was very hard to get the extra resin out of the little crevices on the top. So this time I asked Philip exactly um, how much it, how much resin it took and he said two ounces. He's super nice, um, he'll answer any questions you have. And like I said, his molds are amazing. Super shiny, super easy to work with. And if you're in my group, Resin Fanatics, he is one of our preferred vendors. Along with the Resin Queen and Southern Glitter Goddess. And my sister makes vinyl. She's more creations. And my mom is going to start making... She's going to be my dried flower vendor in about a month or so. After she gets all situated, a lot of people are always looking for um, dried flowers, roses. I thought she owned a business many years ago here in Key West, and she knows all about flowers. It was called To a Tea by Tony. It was really neat.
and I'm just really patiently pouring this in here. I don't want any kind of overflow. I think the orange looks cool so far. I mean, obviously, I haven't seen the front of it yet, but orange and red look really cool together, so I think it's going to be really neat. If your popsicle stick is too thick and you're really nervous about those little crevices, you can get a toothpick and do the same thing. Let it drip first and then get into those little crevices. It's kind of like you're painting. I'm always searching um, for new content. So if you guys have video ideas, post it in the comments. If you guys have questions, post it in the comments. I try to check my comments, um, answer all my questions at least once or twice a week. And then everything that I use in the video, I'm pretty good at explaining and showing you. Um, exactly what I use and I always post everything in the description box so you can always look there as well and I'm just at the end at these tiny little and you can even kind of push them in with your little toothpick push the resin in from the middle This mold is fun. There's a lot to it and I like that instead of just pour and go. So, so much you can do with it. So many different things. So I just have a little, a couple little of these left and then I'm done with this one. I'm trying not to get my head up into the camera. And um, so you guys can see what I'm doing. And you definitely need your space to be level for this. I am finally level after, <laughs> I think I've been doing resin for like two years. I've never had a level space. Finally, now that I got into my new art studio. I am level. <laughs> okay, I think I have everything filled up. Um, I'm going to clean this up a bit with my Q-tip. Just in between where I got a little bit of resin. And my shark... I don't have to focus so much. This is more of a poor thing. And I'm using Great White Shark. I'm kind of backing up. This stuff's flying everywhere. I don't know how the sharky is gonna come out this is the first time I've done one and I haven't had a lot of practice but this color is pretty I'll tell you that I am a shark week geek for sure And the same thing with this, I, when you get to the little corners, you know, you, you drop it in the middle, 
let it run and then come down you can see the bubbles are rising here to the top when you let the resin sit that happens the bubbles all come to the top and concentrate in one place I don't want to use my torch I don't want to not with these molds um Torching is just really bad for the molds. It ruins them. A lot of you that are getting your molds stuck and you can't get them out, that's from torching. So that little bit of bubbles in the back is not going to bother me. I mean, if it's crazy, like, it's going to bother you so bad. Or it's going to ruin the project that you're doing. You can take one of these long lighters that will light because mine's not lighting. I'm sorry, I tried to show you guys. It's dead. But you can take one of these and um, pop it like that without torching it or ruining it. Ruining it. And look at the chrome all over this. Okay, guys. Um, so that's it for today. And we're going to demold these tomorrow and see how they came out. And I want to show you one more thing. So I'm going to undo you what here. I wanted to show you... Um, Susie, who I was talking about earlier, she made this one for me. And you can just do so many things so it hangs with this seahorse. It's amazing. I love it. And that is it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow so that we can demold these. Hey guys, so I was ex um, so excited to wake up this morning and see how these came out my sharky I kept wondering if he's gonna look like he has lipstick on he needs a little eye I need a black. <laughs> I'll have to work on that eye. And let's see how my <laughs> color combo goes. I love it. Super pretty. I think it came out great. I like it more than the shark. I think I could have went a little better with the shark, but I absolutely love the orange and the red and the pink. Um, it's so different from the last one I did with the dark colors. It's just bright and beautiful. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have a great day, guys.